Let's go through the features and functions in full control G-Code Designer. On the main sheet, you put your design in here and then click Generate G-Code. Full control will then inspect those features, generate that G-Code and copy it to clipboard. You could then paste that into a notepad file, save it as whatever file you want to call it, .gcode. And then you can load that onto your printer. Here we've got save and load design buttons. So what this will do, if you click save, it will save this content here, this design, as well as all the settings to the sheet called demos and with this name. So if you wanted to create a new sheet, then you could just add a sheet, my designs, you can name it down here, my designs v2. That can be a new sheet for, for several of your designs, so maybe for a certain project. You can put that name in here. Call it My Design 01. And then when I click Save, it's then opened that spreadsheet, saved all the data there, and you can then load that in the future. So if I delete all this, I can then load design, design. I can choose which sheet I want to load them from, My Designs V2, and then it's load that loaded that design in here. The add feature and skip stop use buttons. So for add feature, I'll select the row where I want to add a feature and then I can choose which feature I want to add. So on one of the other videos I'll show you how to use a repeat rule which I'd add to this line. In the repeat rule I get some other options. So after choosing a repeat rule I can choose which type of repeat rule I want. And that's going to then put in the details that I need to input for that feature. And I can just write over these uh, cells to give the information that I uh, well, that I want for that feature. I'm not going to use them for now. So then skip stop use is basically if I generate the G code for this, what it looks like is that it's a box. And if I say let's skip this feature, the Cartesian repeat, and then I generate the G-code again. It will now only do the first four features, which is going to be four lines. Similarly, if I'd skipped the fourth line and then reactivate feature five, it's now going to print three lines and then repeat them. And then you can see that it's automatically added travel to, because the nozzle finished the third line and then to start the first line again on the next repeat, the automatic travel had to, be, had to be added. If instead of skip, I set it to stop, then the G-code will stop. The G-code generation will stop as soon as feature 4 is reached. Therefore, it will only do the first three features, which are those three lines. So this is really good for debugging uh, your program. Or if you create a design and you want to check that it works step by step, you can just stop features and activate them as required. For parameters, these are going to be stored down here. So if I add a parameter, currently my width is set to 0.4 and my height is 0.2 of my filaments. If I set new parameter, filament width, filament height, and then I'm going to give them a value of 0.5 and 0.1. It's always good to put units, so units and millimeters. And you can click this assign parameter button. And what that's going to do is create a parameter that is named what you've written here and the value is what's written here. So equals filament width equals filament height and then I can update those values as I like and all of those ones will change. So if I set it to be 0.3 you can see they updated. Over here, these are all the settings for your, your printer. So if you hover over these, it will give you a brief description as a note of what those uh, settings do. But very briefly, the Z offset, that means you can start your design at a height of zero, and then the nozzle will be offset by this much for the whole print pass. So that means you design at zero for your first extrusion, 
and then you can offset by this much to make sure there's a gap between the nozzle and the print bed. Sometimes it's useful to change the extrusion rate and the speed of the first layer to get good bed adhesion, so these two parameters allow you to apply multiplication to those. For tool change details, I'll, I'll explain those in a separate video about tool changing. And then here we've got the parameter for the print bed, which is referred to in the G code, the start G code spreadsheet. Same for nozzle temperature. The feed rate for the nozzle uh, when it's printing and traveling are used. So when I created this line, it automatically took that value as the speed in the G code. And when in my previous design, it had automatic travel that was added, that automatically takes the value that's written here. Here you can describe what your uh, extrusion uh, units are going to be and what the filament you're feeding into the printer is. So if you write millimeter cubed, then the value of E in G code will be in units of millimeter cubed. If you write millimeters, then the values will be for millimeters fed in. And that just depends on which printer you're using or which settings you've got for your printer. And then the diameter of the filament is uh, necessary for it to effectively calculate what that value of E should be. Here you can set what start and end G code is applied to your G code file. So the design here is used to generate G code, but then before the G code of this design, the G code from this spreadsheet, start G code spreadsheet, is copied and pasted at the beginning of that file. And similarly for the end G code, you have this. So I'll explain in another video how you actually generate these, but basically you can have a, several different versions of start G code in different columns and then the name of that will be listed in the first row. Same for end G code and then in the main sheet you can refer to which set of start G code or end G code you want to use. At the end of the start G code the nozzle is given a, it's at a certain position in X, Y and Z and this is what uh, the data put here uh, indicates the software and this is used so if you start printing from 5050 that is not where the printer was at the end of this start G code because it was at 2010.3. So full control will uh, see that that's different and add some travel to make the nozzle move to the correct point to start this line. Fan speed uh, is used in my um, start G code to uh, tell the printer what speed uh, to set the fan at. With auto travel retraction, this will decide whether when the full control adds automatic travel, you can choose whether you want it to do retraction or not. So if in my design here, when I skipped feature three, then we had these pieces, these segments of travel where the nozzle's moving rapidly from here to here without extrusion. During those travels, we can set a threshold distance here is five millimeters. And if the, the distance that the nozzle is traveling is above that value, then it will take these um, numbers here and use them to set the amount of retraction, how fast that retraction happens. Same for unretraction at the end of that travel movement and whether you want any Z hop. So that would be the nozzle moving up slightly before it does the, the, um, the travel and then moving down slightly at the, at the end. So to turn auto, auto travel retraction on, you'd write yes here instead of no. In terms of the tabs down here, there's a recycle bin. So you can load designs from the recycle bin. And these are basically gonna be designs that if you haven't saved them, so this is one I was using on a previous tutorial, uh, I didn't save this design, but then as soon as I loaded in a new design, uh, full control basically saved this design to the recycle bin. And this is just in case, uh, for example, you might you might think you've saved a design and then you load a, a new one, then instead of that design being lost forever, you'll be able to go and retrieve it. So in the recycle bin, it will say when that uh, design was saved. That's the date and the time. Feature params, and this sheet is actually a record of all of the parameters that are needed for each of the different feature types. So when I add a feature, say I add a Cartesian repeat feature, what this uh, full control will actually do is take these values and put them here to indicate what data you need to add for that Cartesian repeat feature. So if you've uh, already created 
some features and you want to know what these parameters were, you can either come to the uh, feature params uh, sheet to check what they are, or often it's easier just to add the same feature at the end. So if I add a line Cartesian, then I can just cross-reference to see which of these cells refer to the parameters that are required here. The print path, this sheet has a huge amount of data about the actual uh, design that was uh, used to create G-code. So each line represents a segment of movement by the nozzle or some custom G-code or basically a line of G-code. And then in the notes it will, and the feature tree, it will describe which feature in the design was used to generate this line of G-code. So in this design, well, let me load the box tutorial. I generate the G-code for this. So in print path now, we should have four line features and then a load of repeats of those. And in the print path, that's what we will have. We've got four rows here which are defining the X, Y, Z motions of those line features. And that's feature number one, two, three, four, as the user described them. And then for all of the rest of these rows, it's feature number five. Feature number zero means that travel was automatically added. Uh, and then in the feature tree, you can see that this is the first repeat. So feature five is a Cartesian repeat. So 5.1 means it's the first repeat of feature one, two, three, four, and then 5.2, the second repeat of feature one, two, three, four, 5.3, and so on. And then it's also giving you the details, what type of feature they were, so you don't need to cross-reference to the main sheet as much. And then it's uh, put the G-code that was generated here. If you wanted, you could actually generate this G-code using a concat or concatenate function here by just linking to the X, Y, Z values, the amount of extrusion and speed and so forth. The tool G-code I'll explain in another tutorial. And then the final sheet is the G-code sheet. This is where the G-code is actually pasted to, including the start and end G-code. And this is what is copied to clipboard when you have generated your G-code. So if you've ever uh, generated the G-code and then used your clipboard to copy some text in another program or something, you can always come back to that G-code tab to find that G-code again. So that's a quick overview of all the different features within uh, Full Control. It's important not to change the names of some of these um, tabs because they're, they're referenced when, they, when you click on these buttons or when you're saving designs. But it is possible if you imported somebody else's uh, saved files, they could send you the tab and you could just import that tab and then you would automatically be able to load those designs. Similarly, if somebody sent you a list of start g-code and end g-code or a tab with start g-code and end g-code you could just import that and then replace this sheet as long as it's got the exact same name and then very briefly the actual visual basic code is all written here so if you ever wanted to actually go in and play around with the uh, full controls brains and they're all going to be in these modules of Visual Basic Code here.